Hi everybody, welcome back to Malt Moment. This is going to be the first blended whiskey I reviewed on this channel. If you have watched a lot of my videos, you've probably guessed I'm not the biggest fan of blends. There's only a handful that I really enjoy, you know, 60s and 70s, Johnny Walker, Red or Black Label, Cuddy Sark Prohibition is a very good blend that's out these days, and a lot of the Compass Box releases I find are very good as well. But outside of that, I tend to be a bit of a single malt snob, and I haven't really touched the world of blends too, too much in the same way that I've explored the world of single malts and bourbons and other Japanese whiskeys. But every now and then you find something that's really, really good, and you've got to get your hands on it, you've got to have a bottle, you've got to taste it, and for me, that's been this Hibiki 21. I've been trying to own a bottle of this for several years after having sample after sample and pour after pour in bars for the last, you know, seven, eight years. This is a superb blended whiskey from Suntory. And unlike most other Japanese blends, uh, Suntory actually discloses where the whiskeys in this blend come from. So Hibiki uses blends from Yamazaki, Hakushu, and Chita. And those are three different distilleries that are owned by Suntory or are fall, fall under the Suntory portfolio. Yamazaki is kind of referred to as uh, maybe like the Macallan or the Glendronic of Japan. It's a very heavy sherry style, very rich dark fruit type of flavors. Hakushu is more on the Laphroaig style. It's kind of the Laphroaig of Japan. Very uh, smoky, resinous, um, pine sap, herbal qualities to it. And the third distillery is called Chita, and it's a grain whiskey distillery. So they're making stuff with all different kinds of mash bills. This Hibiki 21 is a blend of a minimum 21-year-old whiskeys and up from those three different distilleries. So theoretically, you should be getting minimum 21-year-old Yamazaki, minimum 21-year-old Hakushu, and minimum 21-year-old Chita being put into these blends. Now, there's many different Hibikis in the lineup. There's the No Age Statement Harmony. There's the 12, the 17, the 21, and the 30. The Harmony up till the 17, they're pretty good. They're pretty decent. I won't fault anyone for liking them. They're not really my cup of tea. I find them a bit too soft and a bit too muted, a bit too smooth. The 21 and up is where Hibiki gets really special. And this 21 in particular is spectacular. I believe this bottle is from 2017. And I can't wait anymore. I can smell the glass from here. I'm going to dive right in. And we're going to check out the nose and the palate. So cheers. Happy weekend, everybody. Hope you're all looking forward to the holidays. Oh, this nose, man. This is a beautiful smelling whiskey. And the first thing, like the first thing that hits me, oranges, like just juicy, ripe, sweet oranges. And maybe not necessarily even orange, more like, it's all the different kinds of orange citrus style fruits. It's like really ripe orange, really ripe tangerines, really ripe mandarins. And it's all coated in this amazingly thick layer of caramel. There's a brilliant caramel sweetness on top of all that like orange, tangerine, citrus kind of sweetness. And in behind all of that, there's just a hint of smoke. But it's not like an aggressive smoke. It's not a Laphroaig or an Ardbeg or a Lagavulin smoke. This is much, much more toned down. This feels like it's, you know, you're in the rainforest and you had a campfire using like aloe vera leaves or something. It's just a very herbal smoke, but it's so toned down. It's like coming back to the campfire two or three days after the campfire has been put out. And you just get like that old sort of burning herbal smell, like something, like something with a lot of oil and fiber was burned here. Oh, it's wonderful. It's not super oaky either, which is impressive considering it's 21 years old minimum and they're taking blends and whiskeys from all these different distilleries or these three different distilleries and mixing them together. It's amazing that the over oakiness isn't there. There's no like harsh barrel tannins at all. Ooh, and like ginger vanilla ice cream. Okay, so there's like a little dessert I make for myself 
and it's basically vanilla ice cream with a dusting of cinnamon and a very very fine grating of ginger like i'll use a like a grater that's got very very small spacing between all the blades and the holes and just do a little fine grating of ginger and mix it all together oh it's delicious and it's very refreshing and i get that same sensation out of this this smells like this ginger cinnamon ice cream with just a hint of that herbal smoke it's oh it's very nice lots of that just all those fruits mixed together all right we're gonna go in for a taste Mm. Mm, that's very nice it's soft and sweet and silky and it's not overpowering it's not harshly alcoholic no burn but good flavor the only thing is the finish the finish is a little bit like oh where'd you go where's like it, it disappears very quickly and I think that's a combination of the low ABV and the fact that they've specifically tried to blend this so that it's not overly aggressive or harsh or bold. But a lot of the flavors are on the mouth at least. It's very juicy. You get a lot more of those juicy fruit flavors and it's not just citrus. The flavors in the mouth are a little bit more on like tropical fruits now. Think like mangoes and a bit of pineapple is comes out for me. And then the finish is a little, little bit more of that herbal smoke and it's a little bit more aggressive. And there's this like salty butteriness, like you're, you're cooking some, some kind of pastry with a lot of butter, butter, but you're doing it beside the ocean almost very interesting and very unique and fantastic complexity for a blend. Now the. The soft finish and, you know, the fact that it's so short might be due to the low ABV. This is bottled at 43% ABV. I can't read Japanese. And if anyone knows, please let me know in the comments. But I don't think this is non-chill filtered. And I'm pretty sure it's got coloring added to it. Uh, unless it specifically says on the label that it doesn't, I tend to just assume that it's got chill filtration and coloring. But regardless of all that, it is delicious. And you can even see, like, the color in the bottle. Even if there is coloring added to this, there's probably some, you know, very well-aged stock in here. I'm going to go out back in for one more taste. Hmm. <laughs> that is getting so much more herbal now as it sits out. There is like a rainforest quality to it or an old pine forest. If you've ever been, you know, out in BC and Canada and you go up into the mountains and you go into like those old pine forests and it just has this herbal, earthy wholeness to it. But those earthy herbal notes are blending so well with these juicy fruit, like mandarin, orange, tangerine notes. And then you just dump caramel all on top of that. It's very nice. It's an extremely expensive bottle now. The Japanese market exploded in 2013 when the Yamazaki Sherry Cask won Whiskey of the Year. And every Japanese whiskey just went through the roof in price. And it's just gotten crazier and crazier every year since. And here we are now, what, um, eight years later since that happened. And the market for Japanese whiskey is not slowing down at all. So it's, it's hard to say go and buy this unless you're a really big fan of whiskey and you're really into trying lots of different whiskeys. I'd say anything like 500 bucks and up is way too much for this. If you're really dead set on getting a bottle of this, try to do it under 500. Even like three to 400 should be your optimal range. But it, it's, it's sad to see that A, the availability on this is so much lower now and B, the price is so much higher. This used to be like maybe 200 bucks, maybe 180 or so if you could find it on sale lot more expensive than that now another thing is that if you're going to buy this bottle at auction there's something you need to look out for on the labels and the very top specifically the seal so the plastic seal for this actually has seams that run diagonally 
and it'll have a gold letter inlay on it that says Hibiki. And that's the proper seal to look for because you'll find a lot of these get sold with a plastic seal that's got seams that go straight vertically down. And that is a mark that they are fake, that it has been opened, maybe dumped out and refilled with something else. Specifically, the seal you want to look for is the seal that Suntory actually uh, closes these with, and it's got seams that run diagonally around the label. So be on the lookout for that if you're going to buy this at auction. I'm going to kick back and enjoy the rest of this over the course of the next half hour or so, and I strongly recommend this. Oh, in terms of a score, eh, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit different for me every time I've had it. The first time I had it, I really liked it. Second time, I didn't enjoy it as much, but it was still really, really good. Today, I'm just having one of those days where maybe it's my palate's a little bit cleaner. Maybe I'm picking up on some extra flavors that I don't normally pick up on. But right now, today... Oh, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10 on the 10-point scale, and on a 100-point scale, I'm going to go... Yeah, I'm going to go with a 92 out of 100 on the 100-point scale today. So, until next time, cheers!